Yeah. But you gotta still think about what this man did. He says, I don't care how many you got out here. Come on. Eight hundred thousand and I just got four hundred mm, mm, mm. But I got God. That's Woo. right. If you got God, you got the majority. That's right. Mm, mm, All right. Challenges King Jeroboam. Mm -hmm. All right, this lesson, Second Chronicles 13, chapter 3, verses, uh, chapter 3, verses, chapter 13, verses 3 through 18. All right, so last week's lesson was titled what? Elijah, Elijah rebukes King Ahab. You know, I'm, i got to give a little background. Uh, mm -hmm. So we know Elijah was a prophet. <clears throat> Ahab was the king of who? Israel. Israel. Now he was the king of all 12 tribes of Israel. No, he was king of the northern, northern, right, northern ten tribes. Uh, northern ten tribes of Israel was called Israel, right? Yes. Elijah was the prophet to the northern ten tribes, and then uh, and there was a southern kingdom, right? What was the southern kingdom called? Judah. Judah. Good. That's where, <clears throat> that's where we get the so so familiar term Jews. Mm -hmm. It's translated from the Hebrew word Yahudah, which means Judah, which is talking about the southern kingdom of Israel. Yes, <clears throat> 2 Kings 16 and 6, you can write that down, but that's the first time that the word Jew was seen in the Bible, but it's talking about the southern kingdom of Israel being in war with it. The southern king of Israel called Judah been in war with uh, mm -hmm. Israel. So <clears throat> in our lesson today, we're actually going back from last week's lesson, we're going back about 60 years to when Jeroboam was king <coughs> of the northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. All right, northern kingdom of Israel, which was called Israel. Jeroboam was six kings ahead of Ahab from last week's lesson, mm -hmm. as king of the northern kingdom. So right before our lesson, grab your Bibles, Second Chronicles 13 and 1, right before our lesson starts, uh, it says Jeroboam had been king over the northern kingdom of Israel for how many years before uh, Abijah, Abijah became king over Judah? Verse 1, 2 Chronicles 13, verse 1, it says 18, 18 years. Mm -hmm. okay, Jeroboam had, and that's what they do uh, all throughout the scriptures. They would kind of give you a, a time frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Asa was king of Judah so many years <coughs> when such and such king of Israel became king. Mm -hmm. And then they would go back and forth like this so you can have a time frame, right? Yeah. So they said, uh, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, Jeroboam was king of the northern kingdom, began Abijah to root to reign over Judah, okay? Abijah reigned how many years in Jerusalem? Three. <laughs> Three years. Now, the end of verse 2 says there was peace between the northern and the southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, between Abijah and, Jer and Jeroboam? Yeah. Was there peace? No. no. War. It was war. Now to our lesson. Starts in verse 3. Verse 3 says, who set the battle in array? 
Who first set the battle in array? Abijah. 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 Who was Abijah? A king. He was king of Judah. Judah was the southern kingdom, right? Yes. Judah was the southern kingdom. Amen. Uh, Abijah was also the son of Rehoboam, like Mother was saying. Uh, anytime, like I say, anytime you see, and I want to put this in there too, he was a king of Judah, which, like I said, is the same thing as king of the Jews. Okay. Anytime you see the term king of Judah, it's saying the same thing as king of the Jews. Uh, I'm reminded in, I think it was Matthew, when Herod was upset, he heard that there was a uh, king of the Jews. <coughs> he got mad, right? Yeah. right? So did all Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But he got mad because he was the king of Judea. Yes. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. Jesus never called himself king of the Jews. Anyway, that, you know, he That's was a right. king. He, 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 when, when Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus said, and You said that. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. He said, Thou sayest. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. I didn't say it, you said it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so king of Judah, just, just, just so, because these next lessons, not the next lesson, but the ones after that, they're going to be talking about Jews a lot. So just so we, they're really talking about Judeans, or people living in, the Israelites living in the southern kingdom of Israel were called Judeans, but the Bible, King James calls them Jews. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're talking about it. So that's, that's who that was. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, so Rehoboam was king of Judah, or the Judeans, Judahites, uh, Yehudi, whatever. So how many warriors, verse 3, how many warriors of valiant men of war did Abijah have? 400,000. Mm -hmm. Now who else in verse 3 set their battle in array? Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Who was Jeroboam again? Jeroboam was king of the northern kingdom, right? Israel. Um, verse 4 says, Abijah stood upon what? Mount Zemaran. Mount Zemaran. Who, would, who was the king of Judah? Who was Abijah talking to at the end of that verse? Jeroboam and Israel. all Israel, or the northern kingdom of Israel. Yes. The Bible don't specify, but I, I specify when it says all Israel is talking about the northern kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. um, verse 5 says, Abijah said, Ought ye not to know, or NIV says, Don't you know? That the Lord God of Israel gave the whole kingdom, said the kingdom, I'm talking about the whole kingdom, over to who? David. David. For how long? Forever. Forever. To him and his what? Descendants. Huh. Sons or descendants. Yes. I'm sorry. Verse 5 ends by saying, God gave David and his sons the kingdom, the kingdom forever by what kind of covenant? Covenant of salt. Covenant of salt. <laughs> which implies an everlasting or never ending covenant. Yeah. Right? Salt is a, is a preservative mm -hmm. that was used and is still used uh, you know, to, to, to preserve meat and yes. it makes it last for a long time. Yeah. God has preserved this covenant that they're talking about, mm -hmm. covenant of Israel, the whole kingdom. God has preserved this covenant <coughs> of kin kingship Hallelujah. To be with David and his sons. This was God's will. Yes. Right? That's basically what Abijah is saying. This was God's will. God's will was for David and his sons to be king over Israel mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. Verse 6 Abijah continues saying that who rose up and rebelled against his Lord? Uh, Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Right? Son of Nebat. Mm -hmm. Says. <coughs> What kind of man gathered unto their Jeroboam? Men that wasn't nice. <laughs> yeah. Like even though. Yes. 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 Yes.
said, uh, <laughs> verse 7 says, what, what kind of men? Worthless. Bane men. Come on, man. <laughs> but Mother was absolutely right, because that, you know, it says, <clears throat> it says, uh, children of who? Of, uh, Belial. Belial. And that word Belial literally means worthless <laughs> men who, men with no worth or yeah, property. Right. Ooh, and I have written down no worth. if if only worthless men are following you, then you are probably what? <laughs> <laughs> Worse. Yeah. That's what it said. Oh, you know. So, verse 7 says, these worthless men did what? Strengthen themselves against who? Against Rehoboam. Against They basically took advantage. This is Abijah talking now. He said they basically took advantage of Rehoboam while Rehoboam was still what? Young and tender. Young and tender hearted. And not strong enough to what? Withstand them. This is Rehoboam. He's talking, I mean, this is Abijah talking about his father, right? He knows the story. He's, okay, this is what it was. Uh, he said, now you think to withstand what? Verse 8. The kingdom of the Lord. In the hand of who? Sons of David. Who originally had the covenant of salt, right? Yes, sir. Amen. Verse 8, Abijah continues by saying, ye be of uh, what? Great multitude. Great multitude. Or you have us outnumbered, right? You got us outnumbered. Mm -hmm. And you have what? Golden, Golden cattle. Who made? Jeroboam. 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 For, for your what? God. Right. Were they really gods? No. Mm -mm. No, they're, they're, they're no gods. Verse 9 says, King Abijah says to Jeroboam, You have not, but you have not cast out. You, you cast out the priest of the Lord. Basically, that's what he's saying. You cast out, have you not cast out the priest? You cast out the priest of the Lord, uh, who, are some, who are supposed to be sons of who? Yeah. Yeah. Aaron's. And the Levites assist him. But Abijah said they made priests like who? They made their priests like unto who? Like the other land. They want to be like the other people, right? Yes, this is yes. what Jeroboam did. Yes. He said in verse 9, whosoever does what may be a priest. This is what Jeroboam is doing. Whoever, whosoever does what may be a priest. Come to consecrate. If you come with young bulls, consecrate yourself and seven rams, you can be a priest. This is what Jeroboam did. Now the priests were the people who stood, the priests were the mediator that's supposed to stand between God and man, right? The priest was a very important part. And God says only the sons of Aaron. Yes. Were supposed to be priests Levites. and the Levites assist him. Mm -hmm. But Jeroboam, after they split, mm -hmm. Jeroboam did his own thing and he started acting like the Canaanites, right? Yes. That's, that's horrible. Isn't it? Amen. Okay, so so it says, uh, verse 9, I, I got it written down. Verse 9 ends by saying, Those are priests of them that are what? No God. No God. King Abijah said, as for us, in verse 10, who is our God? The Lord is our God. The Lord is our God. And by us, he means who? Israel. He's talking about Judah. Right? Judah. Abijah was the king of Judah. Mm -hmm. Southern kingdom of Judah. Mm -hmm. So he said, we have not forsaken who, in verse 10? He says, but, but as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him, and the what? And the priests. Uh, the priests, again, are the sons of who? 
Aaron. Aaron, who waited, who, who, who wait upon their business, uh, who wait upon and their business and assist them. Levi. The Levi. Levi. Verse eleven goes goes through all that God has assigned the priest to do. We're not gonna go through all of that. It's good stuff though. The end of verse eleven, King Abijah says, "We, talking about Judah, keep the what? Charge. <coughs> the charge of the Lord." So you you got all this stuff going, Jeroboam and all Israel. He's talking to Jeroboam and all Israel, the northern kingdom. Yes. Y'all got all this stuff going that you know ain't right, but we we keep the charge of the Lord. NIV says we are observing the requirements of the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. Message Bible says we continue to do what God told us to do in the way He told us to do it. Mm -hmm. But you have rid yourself of them. Verse 12, King Abijah of Judah continues saying, Who is with us? Our God. God himself. Right. Yes. yes. God himself is with us. Yes. Mm. He says, uh, he, he's with us. He is our what? He is for our captain or leader. Yes. Uh, He is our captain, our leader. Uh, where am I at? Who sounds the trumpets? Who sounds the trumpets? The priests. The priests. Whose priests? His priests. God's priests, right? right? Not just anybody you choose as priests. We, we're, we're, we're doing it the way God says. Verse 12, King Abijah said, God's priests will sound the trumpets. Sound trumpets to do what? Let the people Cry alarm, right? Yes. Or as the NIV says, the sound of battle cry. Yes. Against who? Against, the, against you. Against you. <laughs> <laughs> you. And who are you talking to? That's right. He's talking to Jeroboam and all of all of Israel. Right. Now, I think it was verse eight. Uh, well, it was verse four. Abadiah is trying to tell Jeroboam, don't do this. Yes. Right? He yes. told him, y'all don't, don't want none of this. Amen. This ain't us. This is God. Y'all don't want to do this. Right? Amen. So, uh, <clears throat> so he said, against you. And King Abijah was talking to Jeroboam in the northern kingdom. King Abijah warned Israel, don't do this. Right? Yes. Don't fight against the Lord. Uh, God of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. In verse 12. Right? Don't fight against the Lord God of your ancestors. He didn't really say the Lord your God because they weren't really serving God like their ancestors, David, <coughs> Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. Amen. So he said the God of your ancestors. Amen. Abijah said at the end of verse 12, if you call, I'm, I'm just I'm gonna gonna paraphrase. Paraphrase. you call yourself <laughs> trying to fight against the Lord God of your fathers, or ancestors, what will happen at the end? Mm -hmm. You will not prosper. You should know better, right? Mm -hmm. But Jeroboam was in a backslidden state because he was Israel's northern, he was Israel's northern kingdom's first king. The Bible says in quite a few places that Jeroboam made Israel to sin. Yes, yes. The northern kingdom. Man. He made them the sin. He paid a heavy. God did not like that. It says he made Jeroboam made Israel to sin. Yeah, <laughs> that man. is not good. Yeah, go. uh, now, did Jeroboam repent or take heed to Abijah's warning? Yeah. Verse thirteen said he had already set up an ambush to attack at Judah. From which direction? Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm. They had a slick little strategy, right? <laughs> So Judah, the southern kingdom, had enemies in front of them or before them, and from where? Verse 13 at the end. Behind them. Verse 14 says, when Judah's army saw that basically they were surrounded, what did they do? Um, cried cry unto the Lord. Right? They were not prepared for this, plus they were heavily outnumbered. Yes, Back in Lord. verse 8. So what did the priests of Judah do? Verse 14 at the end. 
sound of the trumpets, just like Abijah just said. Uh, priests were with the army as God being with them. Right? They always had the priests with the army. Yes. Verse 15 said, the men of Judah did what? They would shout, they shout. What happened as the men of Judah shouted? Verse 15. God did what? Smote the Jeroboam and all of Israel, all the northern kings. Verse 16 says, what did the rest of the children of Israel do? They fled. And God did what? Verse 10. Verse 16 is Delivered them into Judah's hand. Mm -hmm. The king Abijah and his people did what in verse 17? Mm -hmm. Slew them with a what? A great slaughter. Great slaughter. Mm -hmm. So how many of the northern kingdom's chosen men fell? Verse 17. Five hundred thousand. Now Judah only had four hundred thousand. Right? Mm -hmm. Verse 18 concludes our lesson by saying the children of the children of the rebellious backslide, and I'm going to do it my way, northern kingdom of Israel, led by a backslidden king who heavily outnumbered them, who heavily outnumbered Judah, and had great strategies. They were brought where? Verse 18. They were brought under... Under the sun. Hmm? Under. They were brought under. And that term brought under meant severely defeated in a humiliating way. Mm -hmm. Some versions of the Bible say the children of Israel were humble. Mm -hmm. The Message Bible says, in that verse it says, the army of Israel, <laughs> the army of Israel fell flat on its face in a humiliating defeat. Mm -hmm. Remember, they were heavily out, they heavily outnumbered Judah and they had this amazing strategy, let's get it from the front and the back, right? They, <laughs> yeah. they knew they had it. Yeah. Wow. Terrible plan. <laughs> so verse 18 says, who prevailed or won? Who Judah. prevailed? Judah. The children of Amen. Judah. Amen. And why did it say they prevailed? They because they the because they relied upon who? The Lord. On their strategy? No. On their numbers? No. No. Oh, God. They relied or trusted upon Jehovah, the Lord God of their fathers or ancestors, Amen. David, Jacob, Israel, Isaac, and Abraham. And if you kept reading this chapter, you would see that not only did Judah win that war, but in verse 19 says, King Abijah pursued after Jeroboam and took the big, and took the big bad king. Mm -hmm. And Abijah also took cities from Jeroboam. Yes. Verse 20 says, Jeroboam never recovered under Abijah's watch. Man. But King Abijah tried to warn Jeroboam yes. at the beginning, don't, you don't want this, right? He wasn't Man. boasting himself. He was saying, this is God. You don't, don't fight against God. You don't want that one. You don't want that. You can't win. If you fight against God, will you prosper? No. 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 Will not prosper. So stay on God's side. He will fight for you. Yes, right? sir. Do the possible and God will do the impossible. Amen. <laughs> Be encouraged. <laughs> Other thoughts or questions about this lesson? Comments? I kind of notice how in today's society we put all our eggs in one basket and we rely on winning. You know, people. You know, through marketing and trading, they put all of their hopes in a, uh, to win that one thing for the day, and then they lose, and they, like Mother was saying her earlier, their confidence just goes down, and where nobody can reason with them. Mm -hmm. And that's why suicide is at a great rate, because people don't rely on God anymore. Mm -hmm. They rely on their own abilities, their own intelligence. We done got so far from God. I was just talking to somebody last night. I said, America's really gotten away from God quite a bit. Yeah. It's not, it used to be like Canada. Now we really are in great danger. So I just wanted to say that. And I keep saying, you know, the Bible says our leaders cause our cause mm -hmm. our people. Cause his people to have Amen. Right? We have a responsibility, but the leaders have that influence. And God holds, you know, 
And it just said, I was just going back and seeing how many times it said in there that Jeroboam made Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. God was angry about that. Yes. Right? That was, and it was mentioned, I don't know, six or seven times throughout does, yes. the scriptures how Jeroboam made Israel to sin and God was angry about that. Right? Mm -hmm. That was his people. So, mm -hmm. amen. Just stay on God's side and yes, right. he'll fight for us. Yes. <coughs> he'll fight for us. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing by your spirit in our life. Thank you for giving us the mind to stay with you, God. Stay on your side, to trust you, take you at your word. We thank you for what you're doing by your spirit in our lives for your glory. We thank you, Father. We're constantly praying for the sick and the shedding, God. We thank you for what you're doing by your spirit in the bodies of your people. We thank you for healing, God, from the inside out. We thank you for natural healing by your spirit for your glory. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the word that's coming forth. And we thank you for what you're doing by your spirit in our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, we'll thank you for ever. Amen.